Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to get started with the WebDirect technology from a brand new file. We'll be uploading it to FileMaker Server or Clara Server, hosting that file, getting it all set up for WebDirect, and then you'll be able to use FileMaker Pro or Claris Pro to manipulate that file and program it. And essentially, you'll be learning the basics on how to get started building a web app using WebDirect technology. This video comes on behalf of a request from various customers who often upgrade to the latest version of server, know about WebDirect, but really don't know how to get started, even though they might have years and years of FileMaker experience. In fact, if you have FileMaker experience, that works in your favor because that's really the main and pretty much only skill set you need in order to get started with building web apps with WebDirect. There are some subtleties and some ins and outs on WebDirect and, and its behavior and how you have to think like a web browser when you're working with it. But other than that, your FileMaker skills will serve you very well with this technology. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a brand new file, but keep in mind that you can do what I'm doing or incorporate what I'm doing in an existing file that you may already have hosted. But we'll start from scratch, assuming that you are really brand new and want to start with a brand new sample file to get started. All right, so I'm going to open up FileMaker Pro and we'll create a brand new file. So I'll go to File, Create New. And then just to keep it easy, I'll create a blank file. We'll call it Web Test. That'll be the file name. And I'll put that on my desktop. It's going to prompt me here to make some changes and add fields and so forth. I'm going to just push OK and ignore that screen for now. We're not ready to do that. Now I've got my basic file. So there's three things I need to do with this file. The first thing is I need to define some basic security because you can't just host a file with FileMaker Server, at least with the latest versions, with a file that isn't properly protected. And in many cases, you might even need to encrypt the file. But we're going to create some security for both our ability to program the file as well as our ability to get in as a user for WebDirect. So we'll have two accounts. After we do that, we'll make the file shareable on FileMaker Server. And then finally, we'll get the file ready so that it's shareable with WebDirect. All right, so the first thing is to add the security. So to do that, I'll go to File, Manage, Security. Now, by default, the file comes with some built-in security. It has an active account, and admin is the username. I have full access here already defined, but I want to click on that and define a better password for that admin credential. So I'll put in 123456 as my password. And now this will be the account I use to do all the programming. And the programming has to happen from Claris Pro or FileMaker Pro. The next thing I want to do is add another account specific to WebDirect. So I'll click New, and we'll call this account Web, just to keep it easy. So that'll be the account name will be called Web. And then we'll give it a password as well. And just to keep it, again, really easy, 123456 will be the password for that. And we'll set that password. Now, this is going to default to the read-only privilege set. I'm going to give it a better privilege set, one that's called data entry only. That will allow us to add or edit data as well as delete data if we so choose that in our interface. All right, so now I've got two accounts, one for admin, one for web. They both have the same password. One is for programming, and the other one will be defined sort of as a user account to get access to the WebDirect app that we're about to create. All right, so I'll push OK, and step one is just about done. Now it's just asking me to confirm one of the admin passwords, and we'll do that, and we're done with step one. Step two is to get the file shareable with FileMaker Server. So for that, I'll go to File, Sharing, Share with FileMaker Clients. Select the file here, and then say Specify Users by Privilege Set. I'll click on that, and I want to select the Full Access account that's the account I'll be using to log into when it's time to program the file or access it using Pro. So that's it for that. Note that this network sharing option here is something you can ignore for the purposes of this lesson. This has to do with sharing this file on your local computer to other computers or devices on your network. 
It has nothing to do with getting this file ready for sharing with FileMaker Server. So I'll push OK. So that's step two. Step three is to get the file enabled with WebDirect. So I'll go to File, Sharing, Configure for FileMaker WebDirect. Just like the box we saw before, I can select the file that we're working with, in this case, web test, and I'll specify users by privilege set. And then I'll go here to data entry only and select that so that web is the privilege set I'll be using for that. So I'll push OK, and then I'll push OK. Now, just to double check that all of this worked out well, I can go to File and Manage Security one more time. And take a look at this web account, which is defined as data entry only, that's the privilege set. If I click on the pencil icon here, it will show me what the extended privileges are. In other words, what can this privilege set do? So that would be accessing the FileMaker WebDirect as well as this reauthentication, which goes beyond the scope of this video. But for now, it works and it is set up for WebDirect. So that is good there. Now the file is ready and prepared for use with WebDirect. Now it's time to upload it to FileMaker Server. So I'll close the file here. And assuming that you already know the server address, I can go File, Sharing, Upload to Host. In my case, I'm going to be going to PCULearning.com, which stands for Productive Computing University. Dot com. It's a domain name assigned to this server and configured that way. If you don't yet have a server set up, you can talk to us about hosting a file for you, or you can use FileMaker Cloud or any number of things. In any case, you do want to get a hold of us, and we can help you through that process of getting a server set up. If you're not quite ready for a server, you can technically install FileMaker Server on your local machine and make it act like a FileMaker server. And technically, you can load this file directly to your FileMaker server running on your local machine. You'll have limited capability in terms of serving this to the internet at large, but you will be able to set up a basic test environment that way if you want to get started without really committing to any kind of server or service online. All right, so now that we've enabled this connection, in fact, let me show you what it looks like when you're starting a brand new connection. You can click on this plus symbol here, and you can put the FileMaker server address here in this bar, and then you can give it your own name here. This will either be in the form of an IP address or a domain name. So once you enter the proper address, it should then prompt you just like you saw here before. FileMaker server, enter your admin console name and password. So I'll do that now. So on this screen, you can confirm the server that it's being uploaded to. It'll show you the destination, which is the location on the server where you want the file to be placed. If you want to change that, you can click Change here. These are the two default folders that you might see, Databases and Secure. I've got a, an additional folder set up from before, so I'll put it in the Mark folder just to keep it organized. All right, now that I've got my destination set up, I can either browse for the file by clicking this button, or I can simply drag the file right into this screen to upload it. Provided the file is secured and ready for hosting, then it's ready to go. It'll say file is ready to be uploaded. So I'll click Upload now, and you'll see the file progress along. You'll have an option here that says Open with FileMaker Pro, which means that it will open automatically when I click Done. It'll actually log onto the server, open the file, and prompt you for credentials. So that's what I'll do here. I'll click Done. So now I'm being prompted for credentials. I'll put in the credentials we've been using all along. In this case, it's going to be admin123456 because I first want to open it up in Pro and have access to it while it's being hosted. And you can also confirm the location by looking here for the secure certificate information and confirming the domain. I'll click Sign In. Okay, you can additionally confirm that you're at the right place because you can see in parentheses the name of the server. So this is the web test file being hosted by Productive Computing University. So I'm in the right place here. At this point, I can go and define fields and databases and do all the normal things that I would. It's just that the file is now being hosted. Okay, so how do I get to this through WebDirect? All right, so let's grab a browser. And you're going to put the server location like you did when you uploaded the file in the first place. In my case, it's pculearning.com. Okay, so now let's add some additional string information here. I'm going to put a forward slash 
FMI, which stands for FileMaker Inc., and then another forward slash WebD. So FMI forward slash WebD, and that will bring you to this page. You'll either see a list of databases that are currently being hosted and served to WebDirect, or you'll be prompted again, like in my case, I'm being prompted again. Now, I'm being prompted again because our server first limits your access to the file list. Then once you enter that first set of credentials, you can see all the files you have access to. You click on the one file that you want, you add your credentials in again, and then you're into the file. So I'll put in web for the username and then the password, one, two, three, four, five, six. And at this point, we are good to go. We see the one file that we have hosted via WebDirect. If I click on it, of course, it's gonna prompt me one more time for the file itself. So I'll put in web, one, two, three, four, five, six, and sign right in. I'm gonna show you how we can make a shortcut so that we go right to this file without being prompted multiple times like you just saw. But here is my WebDirect page, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them side by side. FileMaker on the left, and Safari, the browser, along with it being served via WebDirect on the right. So on the left side here in FileMaker, I'll just show you how easy this is. I'll just throw a button on here and I'll tell it to say, hello world. And we'll have that perform a single script step, which is to show a custom dialog box. And that'll be hello world. And with a simple okay button. And that should be good to go. Now I wanna color this something a little bit more vivid. So we'll go here and we'll pick one of these that looks more like a button. There we go. Okay, so there's my hello world button. As soon as I go back to browse mode and that commits the layout, it shows up on WebDirect just like magic. If I click it here on the left side in FileMaker, I'll see a traditional FileMaker dialog like you'd expect. On the right side in WebDirect, I click on that button and I see a WebDirect dialog box like you'd expect. So it's really that simple. At this point, the world is your oyster. You can program to your heart's content here in FileMaker Pro or Claris Pro, and it will show up on your web page. For all the nuances and details about how WebDirect works differently than Pro, you can consult the documentation. We may have future lessons on that as well. Here's another pro tip. So as you're building your script and working with various script steps, uh, you might say, let's say, show all records, which is compatible with everything. But then you might have the beep command, which is compatible with Pro, but not with WebDirect. So to determine that, you can use this filter up here, which then says, show me compatibility or lack of compatibility with FileMaker WebDirect. And at that point, the beep grays out, indicating that that isn't going to work with WebDirect. And you have all these other platform choices as well while you're at it. But that's a good way to work and start to work around how to work with WebDirect from Pro. Earlier, I made mention of creating an easy way to get back into this file. Because it's a standard web page, you can just make a bookmark for the file, or you can copy this, or you can even drag this to your desktop for a quick shortcut. In any case, that will save you one step from that double prompt. Watch me double click this now. Then I can put in my credentials and then I'll immediately get into the page without being prompted a second time. Hopefully this video will get you started with WebDirect. If you have any further questions, you can feel free to leave a comment or reach out to us directly, sales at productivecomputing.com. You can visit our website, productivecomputing.com as well. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you on the next one.